Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the birthplace of modern architecture, the home of Mies van der Rohe. How is everyone doing today? I'm doing great. I hope you are too. Tomorrow, I am starting the spring semester at IIT, and it's kind of special for me because it's spring 2020. can't believe 2020 is here, so the future has arrived. And I would say fitting that I'm going to start teaching a class on generative design. So generative design is, those are a couple buzzwords or a buzz phrase, a buzz phrase, I should say, that's out there. Uh, so I'm going to make a series of videos looking at generative design. And the first plugin that I'm going to look at for generative design is Galapagos. And Galapagos is a standard plugin. Not a standard plugin, it's not even a plugin. It comes with Grasshopper. So if you're using Grasshopper, Galapagos is part of Grasshopper. So we're going to look at Galapagos around the framework of generative design. And Galapagos is an evolutionary solver. And we're going to look at three very basic examples. We're going to look at longest line, largest area, and smallest area. Okay, and just to give you an example of one of these, let's, let's look at the result of longest line. So I have a, a definition here. And... I won't get too much into this at the moment. We'll be, we'll be diving really deep into it, but I'm just going to solve for the longest line. So I'm going to go ahead and start this solver going. I want to see all of these. So what you're going to see on the left is you're going to see this line start to change length and it's going to look like it's rotating around and Galapagos is trying to find the longest length. So I'm going to go ahead and start that solver. And you see that line moving all over and you see a bunch of iterations displaying and it's going through these iterations so zero one two it's already in the tenth iteration and for each iteration it has how many um, we'll call them sub iterations it's looking at so it's starting to figure out the longest length here it's about you know a diagonal line basically from one corner to the other so it's starting to figure that out and it is displaying a bunch of these iterations on the right here. I'm just going to let it go a little bit more. You see it's less options as we as we continue. So yeah, let's I'll I'll go ahead and call these iterations. This is 0 to 44 and then I'll call what's happening here as options. And then this little graph here is showing less and less of these options as it starts to look uh, starts to look the same as it goes. So you see right there, it's pretty much found it, the longest line. So I can go ahead, I can go ahead and stop this. Okay, so let's let me go back to iteration. In this case, iteration nine here. I'll just click here. So you see in the graph, these iterations are very different from one another. And then as it moves through the iterations, they become very similar. Now, one of the things I want to talk about today is this idea of generative design. So the computer has generated these iterations for me using Galapagos. And, you know, me as the architect, me as the designer, I don't have to go with the longest line. You know, I can pick an iteration, something that I think meet some of my needs but it's something that I like more than another so for example if I go to iteration you know around iteration say 25 and then the options of iteration 25 I can pick this one and I can say I can click on reinstate and it's going to show me that option or I can go back into this uh, pool of options and, and pick another one Okay, so that gives you a little sample. Rita, my dog Rita decided to, to, to join us. She's, she's saying hi. All right. Wow. 
Okay, before we get further into that tutorial, just want to remind you to, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And go ahead and click on subscribe, and then click on the little bell to get all the notifications of when my videos are coming out. There's a, if you haven't been here before, there's a lot of content here, and I really enjoy um, having this online community with you guys. And my goal right now is to get to 5,000 subscribers, so I'm pretty close. So if you could help me do that, that would be fantastic. Uh, lots of content here, and I'm making more content uh, here in 2020. Also, connect with me on Instagram at my first name, Alfonso, underscore my last name, Peluso. And you can see what videos I'm making, uh, what I'm up to with my students, which I think is <clears throat> a lot of fun to share with you guys, uh, and just some other things that I might be doing. All right, Galapagos. Okay, so I'm right now I'm on the Grasshopper 3D website, so grasshopper3d.com, and uh, it has a user group Galapagos. So if you're interested in seeing what what's there, have a look. That's a good resource. Also, um, I think that the uh, the the <laughs> the icon for Galapagos is 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 really cool. And uh, David Rutten, the guy who who you know wrote Grasshopper and wrote Galapagos, he has a great sense of humor. So I think it's a pretty fun pretty fun icon. Okay, I've also Google searched generative design, and uh, what we're seeing here is a lot of designs that look, uh, you know, they, they, there's a certain topology that they have, kind of this webbing um, or this kind of biomimicry. So we're seeing um, a lot of these solvers use a certain algorithm that generates forms like this. Um, and these, most of these images are probably from Fusion 360's generative design um, algorithm. But there's also a lot of plugins for uh, Grasshopper. And, uh, you know, if you search Grasshopper generative design, you'll find a lot of plugins. One of them that I'm going to be looking at pretty soon with my students is, is one called Biomorpher. Uh, Biomorpher. And, you know, in this image here, if I go over, the idea is that similar to what we looked at in Galapagos, if we think of each one of these 0, 1, 2, 3 as an iteration, and each iteration has so many options. Uh, you know, that's kind of the principle of generative design, is let the computer generate all these different options for us, and then we as the designers will be able to select what we think is the best for our needs. Alright, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and jump jump into today's tutorial. Okay, so we're going to start out with longest line. So uh, to begin with, I just need a couple of, of points to make a line. So I'm going to double click and I'm going to type in X, Y, Z. And that's my way of getting to construct point. Okay, so I'm using I'm using the draw icons and I, I, uh, I know that might be challenging to know what capsule I brought out. So I'm using uh, I'm using the plugin bifocal so that you guys can also see the name of the capsule. So that's that's construct point. And I'm going to make a couple number sliders here. So I'm going to make number sliders from, I'll make it from 0, I'll go ahead and make it from 0 point. I'm going to give myself a few decimal places. So three decimal places to 9 three decimal places. So I'm going to make a number slider from 0 to 9 with some some decimal places. Okay, and this is going to allow me to move this point in the X and Y. Okay, so there's the, there's the location of that point. So that's going to be my start point. I'm also going to need an end point, so I'll copy and paste this. Okay, so this will be my, my end point, and I'm going to simply draw a line between those two points. So start point and end point. Okay, so there we have that. So what do I need for Galapagos? Well, what I need is what's called the fitness. In this case, it's going to be the length, because I want 
the longest length. So in order to see the length of this line, uh, I'm going to need an, another capsule, and I'm going to need a, a number. Um, I'm going to need a capsule called number. Okay, and I go ahead and plug that in. Okay, and let's use a panel here so we can actually see that number. Okay, so there's the length. There's the length of that line. Okay, so let's let's talk a, talk more about we have everything we need at the moment, but let's let's talk about what we're what we have and how Galapagos is going to use it. So I'm just going here under utilities, or I could double click and type in Galapagos. Okay, so it, it's looking for a genome. So the genome, those are the variables, and you can have multiple genomes. So we're going to be using these number sliders for the genome which are going to move around the start and the end point. And then you need the fitness. What, what are you solving for? And in this case, it's going to be the length of the line. So I'm going to go ahead and... Now, in this case, I, don't, I can't plug in from the number slider. I can't drag these in. Uh, but I can go in the opposite direction. I can drag from the Galapagos capsule, and I can place that into, the, into my number output here. Oh, sorry, that's the fitness. Okay, so that's the fitness. So it, it knows basically what it can plug into and what it can't. So it, it didn't like me thinking that number was a genome. Okay, and now for the number sliders, I can select them all, and I can right-click on genome, and I can choose selected sliders. Okay, so there you see it. Nice, gra I love this graphic here. So you see all the number sliders being plugged in, and then you see what it's solving for, which is the which is the fitness. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and run it just like we did a few moments ago. I'm going to double click on the Galapagos capsule. Okay, by default it's set. The fitness is set to maximize. I can either do minimize or maximize. We'll look at minimize in a little bit. So I'm maximizing the length here. I'm going to go over to solvers. Now by default, it's not set to it's not set to display all the genomes in the Rhino viewport. So I want to display all the genomes so I can see those. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click on start solver. Oh, I click on do not display. Here we go. Display. <laughs> I was wondering what happened. All right, so the first one is display all genomes. So it's doing the same thing that we saw earlier, where it's going to find the longest length. So it's, it's pretty cool that the, the solver can, I mean, we could have figured this example out on our own without Galapagos, of course, but um, just to show you an example that, uh, you know, Galapagos is, is uh, pretty smart and it's figuring that out. Okay, and I can, I can stop this at any time. All right, so... Let's go ahead and cancel that. All right, so that was our longest line. Let's look at largest area. So I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm going to turn off all these capsules. So I'm going to select these capsules, and I'm going to use the shortcut control Q, which turns off their preview. All right, so the next one, largest area. All right, so let's make, let's go ahead and what we'll do is we'll copy and paste these because we can reuse these points. Okay, and I'm going to turn those points on using Control Q so that the display turns back on. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make a polyline with three points, so essentially a, a triangle. So we'll start there. So I need one more set of these number sliders and point. So I'll copy this. Okay, so there's my, my third point. And I'm going to use a polyline. And I'm going to plug these into the polyline capsule, the vertices input. 
Okay, so by default, it does not make a closed polyline, but I can, I can set that, what's called a Boolean, to be true. Right now, it's set to false by default. There's a couple ways I can do that. One is just with a panel, and I'm going to type in the word true. And then I'm going to go ahead and just make that panel as small as I can, and I'll plug it into closed. Okay, so now I want to I want to find in this case the the largest area. And what's you might wonder, well, you know, this triangle is going to get gigantic. <laughs> you know, what's what's the minimum and maximum for the triangle? Well, that's that's defined through these number sliders that are set between zero and nine. So nine inches is what I'm working in. That's that's the largest it's going to be able to to move these around. So that's that minimum and maximum has been defined basically by the min and the max or the range of the number slider. Okay, so now I need I need an area capsule. So I'll plug that in, and then that area capsule. If I use a panel, that's going to display that area. And I want to find the largest, largest area in this case. Okay, so here's what we're working with. I'm going to go ahead and bring down my Galapagos capsule. Okay, so my fitness is the area, so I can drag this over to the area and plug that in. And then the the genomes, which are the the variables, the options are going to come from these number sliders. So I'll just select all those. I'll right click on the input for genome and I'll choose selected sliders. Okay, so there you see that wonderful graphic again. Okay, we'll double click on the Galapagos capsule. We're going to look at the largest area, so we're going to that's going to be set to maximize. We're going to click on solvers. I'm going to change this to display all genomes in Rhino viewport. And I'm going to go ahead and start the solver. So you see that going through the iterations. Pretty cool to watch, huh? It's pretty fun to, to, to see this. If you haven't done this in Grasshopper, I think this is going to open up a lot of possibilities possibilities for you. So it's going to do something, I guess, you know, probably maybe put that point somewhere toward the middle. I don't think it's worked on that point yet. And then stretch it out on the two ends. We'll let it go a little bit longer. So, you know, while that's running, some things that some possibilities of things to solve for. So you could solve for distance between objects. We're looking at area, volume, height, length. We're going to start to get into some form finding using kangaroo and using um, karamba so we can look at stress thicknesses of uh, a thickness of an object, um, the, the density, how light it is, things like that. All right, so this is still still working its way through. All right, so I think you get the idea. So we could we could stop it. And I do again, I do want to stress that, you know, maybe this isn't the ideal shape that you'd like, you know, but you can go back into these iterations and then, you know, select a particular option and then click on reinstate and maybe that's the one you like or so it's generating all these different options and you as the designer get to select from them okay all right let's look at one more example using using smallest area so we're going to look at something a little bit different okay and so i'm going to go ahead and turn this turn all these off with control q Okay, so this will introduce you to some, some other ways of working in Grasshopper. A particular workflow that I like to use is 
I like to use evaluate surface and we'll see we'll see what I'm talking about okay so I am going to start by making a plane So I have a plane surface here. And this is just a quick way to, to, to see some points on a, on a surface. All right, so let's, let's, I won't worry about the size right now. It's, it's probably from negative 10 to positive 10 in both directions. Okay. All right, so there is my, my plane. And I'm going to use the capsule Evaluate Surface. And I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. And then I'm going to use a multi-dimensional slider, so an MD slider. And I'm going to plug that into the point parameter for evaluate surface. Okay, so right now what you're seeing is this is moving around from, from 0 to 1 inch in my case. So there's 1 and 1. Now I want this to take up the entire domain of this of this plane so I want it to be able to move from the lower left to the upper right so what I need to do is I need to reparameterize this surface setting the domain essentially to zero between zero and one so I'll right click on the surface input and I'll choose reparameterize and if you're not familiar with domains there's going to be a link at the end of this video to a video on domains so you can get real comfortable with domains alright so this is a quick way of moving a, a, a point around on a surface. Okay, so now instead of what I like about it, so you might, well, I, you know, he did that above, but when I did it above, I, did, I had two number sliders. Okay, there's pros and cons to everything, but I had two number sliders, and right now I have one. So just a little bit easier, another way to do it. Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste this, and I'll move this. And I'll go ahead and plug it in to point. So that's another point there. And I'll copy and paste this one more time. Move that location. And I'll go ahead and plug it in. Okay, so three points. Similar to what we had above. above excuse me. Okay. So I'm going to use, I can use a polyline just like I did before, but you guys already saw that. So I'm going to use something else. I'm going to use an interpolated curve, which is a curve through points. So I'm going to choose interpolate, the one without the T. And I'm going to plug that into vertices. Okay. Now, you see it's creating a curve. And I can make that a closed curve by setting the periodic to true. So we did that above. I don't think the input wasn't periodic, but uh, it is in this case. So a periodic curve is a closed curve. So I can make that small. Okay, and what I like about this capsule is it allows me to talk about a couple other, a couple other things that we didn't have here with the, the polyline. So that was a closed input. Okay, so the degree of a curve the default degree of a curve in Rhino and Grasshopper <clears throat> is 3. If I want straight line segments, I'm going to set that to 2. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll set that to 1. Okay, so you see the difference between 1, uh, one and 3. Let's, uh, let's do this differently. I'll put this a point. I'll do this between 1 and 3. Okay. Let's try that again. Number slider between 1 and 3. I'll get it. Don't worry. <laughs> between 1 and 3. Okay. And, okay, so there's 1. And you see when I go to 2, it's giving me an error. And then 3, it's doing a, a curve. So to get rid of 2, if I double click on number slider, I'm going to change this to, I'm going to change this to odd numbers. Okay, so there's one and three. Just something that might some of you might find helpful. I know it's pretty basic. Okay. Alright, so we've got this set up. Alright, so we're gonna we're gonna start to use we're gonna start to use Galapagos. Okay, to find basically what I wanna do is I wanna nest this into this surface 
so that the surface has the smallest area. Okay, so that's what we're that's what we're gonna look at. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're gonna use a bounding box. Okay, this is gonna become the surface that I that we actually find the the, the uh, smallest area of. So just to make our lives a little easier, let's hide let's hide some of this stuff. So control Q. Okay, there we go. All right, so there you see the the triangle. The triangle nested into the surface, and we're going to solve for the smallest area. So let's let's get an area capsule out here, and let's plug this in, and we'll use a panel. Okay, so we're looking for the smallest area. Now, what we're going to need we're going to need to be able to rotate this. Okay, so let's say that this is the shape I need. It's this size triangle. But I want to nest it in a surface or nest it on a sheet so that its orientation gives me the smallest size sheet. We do that all the time in architecture for laser cutting. Uh, that's a big one. We want to use the smallest or the least amount of material, least amount of acrylic. IIT students love acrylic and you know acrylic is pretty expensive. So we're going to find the smallest sheet of acrylic here. So need a few more capsules out here so I need a rotate okay I'm gonna I'm gonna want to be able to rotate this triangle so you see that starting to rotate and I want to rotate it about its center about its centroid so I need an area capsule to find the centroid okay so plug that in okay that's gonna become my my plane of rotation and then I need an angle. Now on Grasshopper, the default rotation angle is in radians. I don't know if that's more of David Rutten's sense of humor, but uh, I don't know about you guys, but I like degrees. I like to rotate things in degrees. So I'm going to bring out a radians capsule, and that's going to convert from degrees to radians. And I'm going to set up a number slider between 0 and we can say 360 degrees, but that'll be the same as zero. So I'll take it one step further. So z between zero and 359 degrees. Okay, we'll plug that in. Plug that into angle. Okay, so you see this is this is starting to to rotate. Now this is this bounding box is set to that original curve. We need this bounding box set now to the rotated curve spread some of this out. Okay. Alright, now I can turn off this original curve, selecting it using Control Q. Okay, so here we go. This is rotating. I'm gonna find the smallest sheet size or the smallest area. Alright. Alright, so we're gonna use Galapagos here. And the fitness is going to be the, the area, so the smallest area. And in this case, we only have the one genome, the one number slider that it's changing around. All right, all right, we're almost there. It's pretty exciting. All right, so let's go ahead and double click on Galapagos. We're going to look, in this case, for the minimum, minimum area. I'm going to go ahead and click on solvers, set this to display all genomes in Rhino viewport, and just go ahead and start that solver. <clears throat> all right, just pretty crazy watching that go on the, on the screen here. Alright, so this one taking a little longer than the other ones that we looked at. Alright, 
so you can imagine what's going to happen, what's going to happen in the outcome here. Let that go a little bit. I know you guys, you're lucky on that. In the YouTube world, you can uh, you can fast forward these things, right? All right, so it didn't take too long. It got there right at the end. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm just kind of curious on what that area is. Um, so let's see. Go. Now a couple other things I didn't show is you could display only the top top 10% of the genomes and top 25 and top 50. So it's a good thing that we look at that. So we'll look at top 10. So here's the top 10. All right, so that's it. All right, so that has an area around 131. So there, it orientated that piece for me on that particular sheet. Uh, and that gave me the, the fittest orientation. All right, so if you guys have any questions or better ways to do things, please leave uh, those suggestions in the comments below. Um, my name's going to, or not my name, but my head's going to pop up in the upper left. If you haven't subscribed, please subscri subscribe to the channel. I'd like to, to connect with you. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and click on the thumbs up and leave a like below. We'll see you soon for the next generative design tutorial. Have a great day.